Hello, it's been a while since I've uh, made a Robin Hood stock video. Um, just basically because all my positions were crashing and I decided to just sell the majority of them and wait for a really, really good opportunity to try to make some of my money back that I was losing. I think the, the maximum drawdown, let me go ahead and see what it is on my account, was, uh, see, May... Well, about $22,000 my account got down to over the year. Yup, it got all the way down here. And now I'm up around $47,000. i am starting to make some momentum back. Hopefully I can get up to the top level, which would be about $75,000. But this is what I was able to do when the market was crashing. I saw the position. So um, I waited for a, a really good opportunity with AMD. I bought an AMD debit spread the lower leg at 77 and a half and the upper leg the sell leg at 80 I paid an average of 110 and uh, to make 250 so we're talking about let's do the math real quick 250 divided by 110 so a 2.27 return so more than double your money back in a quarter on top of that um yeah i paid 16 let's see where is it how much i pay uh 16,451 to make $37,000 or 36,500 dollars so it's worked out pretty good and the reason why i took that position is because i took it around may 4th so i opened it up around this time right here and it continued to dip but if you look it's had you know numerous support around $75 even dipped a little lower as low as see here low as 7250 that was its all-time low in this range but as you can see it had all this support here and AMD was doing really well as a company they're coming out with new products um you know the projections for the next year the growth rate is like I don't know. Let's let's check before I, I start uh, belching out numbers. See the yeah the growth weight for this next year is seventy nine percent, and the year after is almost thirty percent. So if you did a discount cash flow, um, it showed AMD was undervalued, and uh, the value of AMD is around a hundred dollars at a discount flow rate, assuming uh, EBITDA multiplier of about seventeen which is pretty standard for this industry and a uh, interest rate about 10 percent on discount flow cash rate I, I can make another video about how to do those in the future but yeah amd was undervalued and um it wasn't going anywhere the implied volatility percentage of amd on his options was extremely low meaning they were extremely cheap options at the time and about somewhere about here AMD actually made the announcement to do a buyback sh uh, share program so they're gonna start buying back their shares to, to put the price back up because they also as a company believe they're undervalued their CEO um, uh, the woman Lee I can't remember her first name but uh, she's she's very smart she's on top of everything she won awards for the like the best um, CEO of in the semiconductor industry. She's getting a lot of accolades as well. AMD's a super well run company and um, as the ship shortage begins to subside and they're able to meet the demand, there's no way they're not going to start making more money. The only thing that held some people back and um, I looked at it too was their, their uh, profits to earning ratio. Uh, let's see where it is on here. PE ratio was a 61.50 at the time it was about 35 times earnings um but if you look forward like i said with the 80 percent growth rate and you do a, a five-year you know discount flow cash rate and you look at the demand and the actual industry as a whole there there was no way this company wasn't gonna wasn't gonna hold that support level at 75 and i felt confident that this was one of those opportunities where I was like 90 to 95% sure it would bust above those levels. It's currently trading at around 85.64, but it was a time where all my account was crashing. 
I needed a big win, and it looks like if it can hold for the next three weeks, it'll be a big win for me as well. Um, some of these other companies I've had, I could, it just it was I couldn't get out of the positions to begin with. Um, but yeah, Lemonade has rebounded quite well. I've got a ninety dollar call option. Um, which it was near its low. It's now trading at 111.90. They're doing car insurance as well. They announced that product. So yeah, they're doing pretty well. Um, Lamb Research was the other one that had a lot of equity in. See, it's almost six thousand dollars for this call option, and it's worth about six thousand two hundred and sixty dollars now. Um, Lamb Research is a company that makes semiconductor equipment, and they have more demand than they can meet and their their PE ratio is not too bad 2662 I think their forward PE ratio is under 20 as well so they're expected as well to have a lot of growth in the future so um, they're pretty much undervalued at this point as well moving forward a uh, couple of other positions like I said NEO um, I kind of turned into debit spread to get a little money back BNGO um, 23 and 1 I had a um, when I, when I was into SPACs and stuff, had some investments in here. I've been getting into more of the um, value plays as well, but I'm not going to talk too much about it right now. Like I said, uh, if AMD expires in the money, my account will be above 50000 That will be a little bit of leeway to work with. I'm also experimenting with SPACs. I'll show you what I mean. ACIC. I've done this with some other SPACs as well, where... SPACs have an inherent, uh, what they call it, floor of about ten dollars, so they're not going to get much lower than ten dollars. So knowing this, I started doing these uh, debit spreads, seven fifty to ten dollars, where you buy the the lower leg um, below the floor and the upper leg right at the floor, and what will happen is eventually this will decay to nothing. And if it's above 10, you know, you'll get the whole 250 when you paid $2 for it. So you get like a 20, 25% return. However, with these, since they merge, once they merge, it, it's game off. You know, they, they could drop below, well below. And this actually happened to me. So it's a learning experience as well. Okay, they're Indian now, but THPC, Indy Semiconductor. When they merged, well, they're back up to almost $10, but when they merged, I'll show you what I mean. They merged right about here, and they just dropped all the way down to about 883 So if you're stuck in that debit spread, you could lose money. I mean, the risk is not super, super. It's not like you're going to lose all your money, but you're going to lose, a, I think I lost maybe 15 20% what I put on that spread so I'm gonna be more careful in the future that on the day they announced their merger after their voting it actually spiked so knowing that this would be a good time to sell the the debit spread moving forward on that spike so that's gonna be part of my new system with these uh SPACs and I'm experimenting with it but if you can get you know 15 to 20 percent every month and a half or every two months um, it's easy money. It's a it's a little wrinkle in the market that is kind of like an arbitrage opportunity that I plan to take advantage of. I'm working on it to refine it. Like I said, it's not a perfect system, but um, I'm back in business now. I took a little time from the market. I learned from my mistakes, and I'm going to be posting more videos in the future. Um, yeah, like and subscribe to this video. Subscribe to my channel. You know, I do ve things very logically. I analyze um, the stocks. I've been at it for almost a year now, and I've learned a lot of lessons training options and debit spreads. And I think that all these lessons I've learned moving forward and uh, seeing the market crash a little bit, and, you know, developing new strategies uh, to take advantage of little wrinkles that are low risk because I, I want to be lower risk now, you know. And um, looking at different strategies and how people evaluate companies and not going all in on hype companies so much or not going all in on value traps as well. Because I know there's guys on YouTube that do nothing but value companies and, you know, they're missing out on the big companies. And then there's guys that do nothing but hype stocks and 
they get hurt pretty bad on crashes like happened about three months ago so um i'm kind of trying to bounce things out find little wrinkles in the market arbitrage opportunities that no one's talking about so yeah like and subscribe uh subscribe to my channel you know i think you won't be disappointed i don't think anybody else does things the way i do personally um I'm not a big time follower. I, I, I try to learn things. I don't try to just jump on hype or because a big time YouTuber says it. I think a lot of these uh, bigger YouTubers um, aren't so logical that they uh, kind of pander to the crowd, their audience, and they're able to make a lot of money just pandering where there's nothing backing what they're doing or the decisions they're making. They're just riding waves. And um, yeah, so moving forward i like to get an audience i like to you know share stuff maybe start a, a support group um uh, a video chat um if i could get a thousand maybe do some live trading you know as i'm reading more and more books about value trading about trend trading uh getting more and more experienced and you know if i could eliminate my mistakes i'd be up at probably a hundred thousand dollars right now so your first year you're going to make a lot of mistakes and i'm going to try to make some videos about the mistakes i've made you know getting into option training getting into stock training and uh try to share everything on this channel so yeah just like and subscribe and um more to come